Hey everyone, this is Darren Benson again with Performance Motor Coaches. Uh, for some of the people that have been up to the Middlebury area and been to the factory here at Show Hauler, you'll know where we're at. So we're actually between some buildings here. Uh, we've been in the area for a few days now. Uh, this particular coach right here, we're going to do a video of. It's not going to Texas, it's going to its new owner in Kansas City. Uh, hopefully next week they'll come out, uh, pick up the coach, we'll run through everything, show them the coach, and uh, be able to walk over everything with them. So, for some of the people, they're trying to figure out why I'm dressed like this. Uh, we finally got to do a little kayaking this afternoon. Uh, I tell you what, the more time we spend up here, the more we enjoy the area. It's a great area to come explore, come hang out. Uh, we were on a lake over north of Elkhart. And we'll do a little kayaking finally this afternoon. It hasn't been all work. Um, so that's the reason why you see my not so freshly tanned white legs and flip-flops. But want to do the video. We're headed home tomorrow in a coach back to Texas. This was kind of our last ditch effort because uh, we'll be full on next week getting the coach ready for the customer. So a little dirty right now, but uh, hopefully it'll all show the same. So uh, back to the area. I, I tell you what, it's amazing. You know, I, I travel all over, and you know, this is definitely this is very uh, small town America, uh, very Main Street America. You drive around, and it doesn't make a difference whether it's a million dollar house or a sixty thousand dollar house. Everyone takes pride. It's amazing. It's very much indicative of what you get in this product here that people take pride and that's something that I, I think is try, try not to get on like too political of a rant uh, what's what's getting lost in America is people taking pride uh, it's very unique you, you drive down the road and people are mowing their lawn uh, last time we were here five weeks ago it was snowing and people were mowing their lawn in the snow uh, it's amazing to be up here uh, everybody is very very personable so if you get the chance to come up to Millberry and check out the factory I don't think you'll ever regret it even if you're gonna build a coach you know a year or two or three years down the road so uh, I think it's very beneficial to come check all the, all the coaches come see the area come enjoy the area definitely glad we got to spend a little time this afternoon we'll be back next week maybe we can kayak one more time maybe I'll have a little bit tanner legs by next week so here we are. So this is Show Hauler Coach 2025. What the 20 signifies is basically um, that unit being produced. Actually, it was ordered in the year 2020. So this is the 25th coach of what was ordered in 2020. So uh, late summer is when this coach was ordered. We are basically, I guess, just a handful of days after Memorial Day. It's done, it's ready to go to the customer other than a little bit of bath work. Or a little bit of a uh, little bit of bath on the coach, but uh, so we'll start with the chassis first. This is a Cascadia 126, so a little bit longer hooded Cascadia. It's a new body style, uh, definitely a more sleek look than the older body style, in my opinion. Uh, great headlights. So as far as how it's powered and equipped, it's the Detroit Diesel. It's the DD16, which they basically you know rebound up. This is a 15.6 liter Detroit. As far as the transmission itself is the DT12. So it's a Detroit transmission, 12 speed. It's an automated manual transmission. Uh, the nice thing about this particular truck and, and its power plant is you have basically Mercedes up top. They own Detroit, they own Freightliner, and everybody communicates. Uh, that's some of the problems we've had in the past and, and some of the other trucks have um, is too many people, uh, you know, the, the proverbial too many chiefs, not enough Indians, that people can't communicate. So it's great to have this product. Uh, I think we jumped over to the Detroit about uh, four years ago and uh, never really looked back. Uh, I can tell you I drove a Cummins powered rig back the uh, last last time, I guess it would, would have been five weeks ago. Um, you know, horrible fuel economy and uh, we couldn't even get back to Texas on the amount of uh, diesel exhaust fluid that was on board. So that's what's so nice about this. The quiet ride, um, just the, you know, the full connectivity of the adaptive cruise, uh, the crash mitigation, the blind spot monitoring, on and on from there. So I don't, I personally don't think there's a better truck out there. Um, say what you want, you know, the diehard truckers. Um, I will take this any day of the week, and I've driven basically everything imaginable underneath the sun. I've been doing it for quite some time. So, as far as the chassis goes, 18,000 pound front axle on it. Uh, the rears are 220, so basically 58,000 pound capacity chassis here. If 
people, and you know, we, we get this question a lot, well, we, you know, we have a truck that was in the family or belonged to my grandfather and so on and whatnot. Um, can one of those be converted into one of these trucks? Well, the question is, is it double frame? Does it have an 18,000 pound front axle? Most of those don't, so keep that in mind. Uh, we've done a few units where we're very, very small conversions on over the road trucks. There was a lot of nostalgia to those trucks. Uh, we've, we've had some customers uh, spend more money than buying a new truck, uh, putting heavy front axles, doing double frames. So anything is out there, but unfortunately don't, don't think you're just gonna roll in here with an old retired truck and stick a conversion on it. You generally have to spend a lot of money doing it or build a really, uh, really baseline conversion on it. So we come down, beautiful paint job, a lot of wow factor to this. Um, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of white, so uh, the more white the better. Uh, these chassis start out as a white unit. So what I like is, you know, you catch a rock or whatever and you uh, cause a rock chip down below, it's gonna be white on white, and so you really won't notice that. If you were doing uh, black or anything dark, you know, you'll see that rock chip from a mile away. So pretty happy with everything here. This does have the Gerard rooftop awnings. So these are a dual stage awning, so they go out and then downward. Uh, makes it pretty handy because they are so incredibly tall. Just a nice sleek look. So basically, you see the coach driving down the road, you don't catch all the satellite dishes, you don't catch all the air conditioners, you don't see the solar panels. So just a nice sleek look. Uh, you know, that's something you'll generally see on any higher end uh, Class A and the, and the Prevost chassis. So that's kind of what, that's the kind of the drive to that. Uh, just be able to kind of hide everything and just have a really sleek look. So all the compartments right here, start opening up these guys. So, this is kind of a signature thing that I like to do and been done several times. Um, you know, some of the other dealers are coming on board. It, to me, it just makes sense. So, you can see the magic happen right here. Put my hand in, see it through there. Same thing right up there. So, if you have like a longer, uh, let's say, a, you know, a, a ladder or maybe really long golf clubs, if you're eight foot tall and you got golf clubs that are this big, you can stick whatever you want there. Uh, for some of the crossover customers that have had diesel pushers in the past, they have that storage that goes all the way across. But with these truck chassis and your drive line, you can't do that. So we try to utilize as much storage as possible. And so that's the reason why I like to combine two or three storage compartments. Technically, we probably could have done all the way down here. Every single, you could have hauled, I guess, spare pipe in there or whatever. But uh, to me, that's a decent amount of room right there. Uh, this is equipped with an outdoor fridge prep so a uh, customer can drop in whatever they want after the fact. I generally like to prep them versus forcing a customer in to whatever outdoor fridge that I want. I prefer the dual zones. You can do ice in one and then you can do uh, drinks in the other or you can make them both ice. You can kind of program it however you want. So right in here, we've got a little spot for uh, outdoor speakers. The customer will have some outdoor speakers. He'll be able to, you know, be, be able to put outside. Uh, and that's the connections right there, and that'll integrate with the uh, with the surround sound inside. Outdoor TV. So pretty much all the way across the board, uh, show hauler's gone to the 43 inch QLED. So in your aero caps, your bedrooms, and your living areas will be the 43 inch, 43 inch QLED. I've been pushing pretty hard to go smart across, all the way across the board. Don't know where they buy some of these TVs that aren't smart. They must have a time machine to get some of these TVs, but glad everything is smart all the way across the board uh, just to kind of come up with the times. There's a little USB up there, so if you're outside, plug your phone in, be able to hang your phone up right there. Keypad right there and a key fob, and so all the sides, all these particular side swing baggage doors will lock, including the entry off of the key fob or the keypad right there. We'll side guide light right here. Uh, and that is a turn signal as well. And then you can activate these on the dash. Um, my favorite is if somebody's hanging out right here and won't get out of the way, I will light those up and it generally gets their attention pretty quick and they either speed up or slow down and get around you. Transfer switch is located back in there. And then this is the diesel fired boiler right here. Uh, Show hauler pretty much exclusively uses the ITR, which builds. Uh, this is an Oasis uh, 50,000 BTU hydronic heater, so it's a diesel-fired boiler that heats coolant. 
and then the coolant is circulated inside the coach to warm the coach and there's a separate heat exchanger internally for your domestic water so if you got water and you got diesel you will basically have hot water one thing that i do like about the oasis versus like the aqua hot brand is there's two electric elements uh, the single electric element in the aqua hot basically uh, will provide hot water on a hundred degree day other than that it's kind of worthless in my opinion the, the two electric elements you can uh, heat the coach on a 40 degree or above day and still be able to have decent amount of uh, of heated or hot water this particular unit right here we did not plumb to the engine itself uh, that is an option to be able to use the waste heat from your engine to be able to keep the system warm we did not option that um, it's kind of a matter of preference uh, it's about a twenty three hundred dollar option I and you know a lot of people you can burn a lot of diesel in this and it's fine to run the system driving up and down the road off the diesel fired burner so not a problem we come back around the back heavy 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 you know the rest of the RV industry when you, whenever you see ladders uh, I call them uh, widow makers or, or death traps because they're just I mean they're put together um, you know the you know Americans in general aren't the smallest people in the earth I'm 220 pounds I couldn't imagine jumping on uh, one of those uh, more RV ladders so this is a custom built ladder uh, powder coated very stout very robust even though it says 250 I know you can do a lot more than that uh, so you could add you know you could add like a like a bicycle rack to it uh, definitely stout you could do like an outdoor flagpole to it as well we'll talk about the hitch so all show haulers will have a 40,000 pound hitch assembly and then this is basically what uh, is your ultimate rating right here so it comes standard with this upper portion right here with the 2 and 5 16 ball so that particular system is rated at 30,000 pounds and then we weld the 2 inch receiver down below the reason why you want to do that is let's say you needed something with a 2 inch ball or you need to flat tow your car so you know this particular customer right here you can flat tow boom right there or put a stacker right up here little camera plug right here of course you'll see several different cameras high and low here the camera plug will allow him to run one camera in his stacker trailer and then one camera on the back side of the trailer uh, we've done units where uh, the traders have had up to six cameras so it's all about how many wires you want to run up front and how much money you want to spend as well so right back here is the 50 amp buddy plug so essentially the generator on board here will more than run the entire coach no problem and have some additional uh, capacity as well so if you were you know if you were a race guy and had like a stack of trailer or you know let's say you went to the sand dunes with your buddy and he just has a fifth wheel travel trailer well you can come back here and plug in right there not a problem to do that come over here to this side of the coach and we have some of the waste area right here uh, Shoal is one of the few manufacturers that will do two sets of grays or blacks or basically whatever a customer wants. Obviously it depends upon the floor plan itself. So essentially right back here we have the back bath, 72 gallon gray, 72 gallon black, and then uh, as far as entering uh, water into the coach, this particular coach right here actually has a hose reel right next door, um, but if you want to take that offline and then be able to run a garden hose up into this and you know basically circumnavigate the, the hose reel not a problem there it does have a macerator pump here so basically that will pump your waste uh, people like that um, you know I, I'm kind of kind of torn a little bit because gravity's never really let me down uh, but let's say we were on this area right here and you know it is definitely higher elevation right here than right there um, so if you had that that hose laying all the way down the ground obviously it's not going to come uphill uh, so you're going to have a little bit of waste left in that the nice thing about the macerator system you bring it over here uphill further away click a button be able to evacuate all that waste out so right over here you have your 50 amp uh, short cord right here power reel and then there is a uh, garden hose reel there as well and they're both power I come up here and we do have one storage compartment over here on this side uh, nice to be able to put extra stuff and then there is a waste right here and so this waste is for your galley 
and for the uh, the front bathroom right there. So it's a combo tank right there, and definitely we wanted to do the macerator uh, pump right there to be able to pump that waste out. So 72 there, and 272 gallons back behind the axle here. So this is the largest generator you will see on pretty much any show hauler. It's the only uh, generator that's RVIA compliant. All the coaches that show hauler builds are RVIA compliant. So 12.5 Onan, very, very easy to service. Six quarts of oil, uh, incredibly easy to get in. You know, I had some people ask about uh, generator slides. I really don't think you would need a generator slide. Generator slides get, they they rattle and then they, they drive me crazy. So to me, I can get into this coach, do whatever I need to do. Anything beyond that, you have a few bolts to be able to pull the generator out. But you can do full service here as far as getting to your air filter right back there, um, oil filter, and then fuel filter right there. Very, very accessible. Hmm? I don't know what I'm being told, but I'll try to correct it later. So in here, we have the inverter. The nice thing about the inverter is we finally got them to push up on the side right here and set it down on the floor. So you can still put some, some items in this compartment right here. It's not where you want to haul your gasoline or your propane tank uh, by any means, but you can put some extra stuff in there. The nice thing about the way show hauler does, everything 12 volt related from the floor down, boom, right here. So very easy to be able to check fuse. You don't have to go start hunting everything. The disconnect right here for the coach, and there's a manual disconnect back in there for the inverter itself. This guy right here, they didn't want anything special on batteries, so just four six volt golf cart batteries. You can do all kinds of lithium batteries. Uh, really, your only, real, your only real limitation from there is how much money you want to spend. So uh, we've got a coach just like this that's in production that has uh, three or four of the 270 amp hour battle, Battleborn batteries coming on down the pipeline. So side cams right here. Uh, you can place the side cameras there or on the side of the hood. Just kind of matter of preference. As far as fuel on board, single 120 gallon. We've had people inquire about doing a larger capacity uh, tanks beyond that. Maybe 150. The problem is these coaches are heavy. You know, people are are adding more stuff to them. They're getting taller. They're doing more awnings. Uh, these are a fully welded steel frame, which are much heavier than a traditional coach that will have a vacuum bonded wall. So, uh, just the sheer weight of these things uh, doesn't allow for too much, uh, ad, you know, additional fuel on board. Me personally, the 120 is all I need. I'm ready to pull in somewhere and get some more fuel with the 120. Def tank right here, 13 gallon uh, def tank right there. We'll open this guy. I do have the clearance light, so it'll be beeping inside. You kind of check everything out. Factory seats. That's a, I'm a big proponent of the factory seat. We just take and, in fact, I'm just going to turn this off. We recover the factory seat, so it's a nice match back to the couch and the dinette and such. Uh, really easy to operate these seats. There's a lot of different functions and features to them. One thing that the new body style does not have is heated. Uh, Freightliner quit offering that on these particular coaches. Can heated be added after the fact? Definitely. You know, the, I mean, those pads are next to nothing. I think they're 20 or $30 for the heat pads. Just a matter of doing some wiring, so not a problem to be able to add it after the fact. In general, most coaches aren't 20 degrees inside. You've been living in the coach, so I think, you know, I'm not a big fan of the heated seats and the coaches, the cars and trucks, not a problem because you're generally getting them in, in them whenever they're relatively cold outside. So I'll swing inside and want to show you um, with this particular floor plan right here and especially with the couch that this customer wanted, it does get a little tight inside. So you can work your way through for a customer that wanted more walkthrough. We could do just a simple uh, jackknife couch. This particular couch right here is a full fold-out couch, so it protrudes out in the aisle a little bit. Heated tile floors, and this is um, a tiled entry as well. Pretty happy with the heat with the uh, tiled entry. So I come here. Like I said, it is tight. You definitely you don't want to be doing this with your spurs on. You're going to tear up your uh, your couch. But you can get through here. Just got to do a little meandering. If this particular couch right here was a jackknife, 
this particular piece right here would not exist. So it'd be further flush, and that does make a pretty big difference right there. This customer right here wanted a couch to be able to flip out and be able to sleep real live adults versus the jackknives are just good for kids. So televator right back here, theater seats here. Um, there, there are electric little USB charge points in there as well. And this one does not have, some of these come equipped with some additional plugs inside. Definitely not a problem to be able to add some more plugs to them. So if you wanted to be able to put your phone basically right in there, instead of plugging in there, it's not a problem. This customer just wanted the standard window set right here. We could have done much larger windows, could have started deleting overheads, but they're again just kind of a matter of preference. This is the Villa Furniture, which is by far my favorite furniture that exists. Um, typically seen in much, much higher end coaches uh, from a price point, generally a million plus on the Villa. So pretty happy to have the Villa uh, furniture on board. Limited selections with the Villa. So you can't go to Villa's website and say, well, I want this, this, and this. This is what you see here is basically all you can get with the exception of either a jackknife or a flip out here. That's really about your only options as far as Villa goes. So I'm going to run these slides outwards. And you guys can just enjoy the slight grind to it. So these particular slides right here are the same slide mechanisms that show haulers used for eons. So it's a simple lift co system, nothing wild and crazy, very easy to service, very easy to go through, uh, not a lot of potential failures. See how long I can keep this going outwards. So the kitchen is a uh, is a complete slide right here, and if you'll notice some of the depth of the slides themselves. So anytime you enter plumbing into the slide, it'll only be 18 inches in in depth versus anywhere from 32 to 36 on a slide without any plumbing. So that's the difference there. So you don't see this guy move out too much. The counter is obviously large, but the the wall you know the depth of the wall is not very much in comparison to the to the opposing side right here. So uh, as far as the color on board here, this is a uh, caramel maple. Your options on your wood are basically oak or maple. Um, maple is really my go-to and, and the caramel is probably one of my favorite go-to's. As far as the cabinets themselves, this is more of the old school traditional raised panel. You could do this in a basically reverse. <coughs> So this is a shaker style. So basically you can be reversed. A little bit different setup. <clears throat> just kind of a matter of preference there. Uh, most of my coaches were doing a flat panel. Uh, just more of a modern look as well. As far as backsplashes, that's the true customization of show hauler. As far as floor plans, you can do different backsplashes. Uh, this particular coach right here has three different backsplashes. Uh, so we were able to accommodate exactly what they wanted. So pull that trash can right here. And here's the part of the video where I kind of get a little hoarse, so I apologize kind of about clearing my throat. <coughs> so a little bit of wow factor right here. Uh, this is the RGB lights. So the underbody lights are RGB, which is red, green, blue. And with those three colors, you basically make every color underneath the rainbow. So you see these guys going on. You can turn these up. You can, I mean, you can turn this into a full-blown disco right here. I'm going to bring the TV up right here. The, that is a 55 inch uh, Samsung QLED as well. The front TV, uh, the Televator TV and the outside TV will all be hooked into one satellite. However, you can run, you can stream to any TV. If you have three different devices, you can stream to three different TVs. So not a problem there. Uh, very simple to use and operate. <coughs> so this will basically flip all the way out. These do not offer any seating. And most of the coaches you see from Show Hauler will not have any sleeping capacity right here. These are quartz countertops, so they're pretty darn heavy in comparison to like your Corian. So we just make these things fixed right here. So this is standard on all the new Show Haulers. So they'll have a nice little cup holder here, a 110 plug with USB. And most, you know, most seating locations will have a USB as well. So I come back here. 
Um, this particular, this I think this is a 20 cubic foot uh, Samsung. Can you know? The question is, can you do units with uh, water indoor and ice? Yes, you can. I don't drink the water in my own coat. I'll shower it. I'll brush my teeth, but I typically don't. So I typically don't like doing ice uh, in coaches, and definitely not any kind of ice and water in the door. Just kind of cleans it up a little bit. So right here we have the Firefly operating system. Done a few videos on this. Very easy to use. Very easy to operate. Uh, this particular uh, setup does have auto generator start, so either off a of low voltage or off of air conditioner man, it will fire the generator off. <coughs> Heated tile floors, there's your Oasis controller right there. Half bath in here, plenty of room. We kind of deviated this a little bit for some more storage there. Not really storage up there, but storage down below, kind of a small linen closet there. Still plenty of room. You plop down a toilet. You know, you're not touching anything. Good room in here. Uh, decent storage all the way through and through here. And then a really large, you could put a lot of stuff in that vanity. We left all the paper towel holders or the toilet paper holders off. I typically even try to leave the towel holders off just in case somebody wants them in a different configuration. Um, we've been doing the newer coaches with a separate. Uh, Separate switch for the uh, for the hydronic register located inside the bathroom. So you turn that off so it doesn't boil inside your bathroom. So uh, pantry here. There again, this is you could do this. You could do it a little bit wider. You could do um, a little bit more depth. We just wanted this customer. We just wanted to do individual drawers. If you'll notice, all the drawers will all be dovetail, and all the drawer glides are all soft close as well. Uh, this particular setup right here is convertible. We could go through and even add a uh, clothes rod in there. Washer dryer right here. There's a little storage. We brought these up to be able to utilize some storage down below. Um, hopefully, they don't have an issue getting into this guy. I don't have a problem, but a little bit shorter person might have an issue there. All pocket doors that all latch in the bottom, no magnets back there in the back. So this particular bed right here is 80 inches long, 72 inches wide. So it'd be an RV king. Uh, don't get too hung up on that, but basically just kind of look at the sizes. So 88 inch slide versus 81. You can, you can jump down to an 81 inch slide and then go to a 66 wide bed or a 60. Nice little, come over here, try to get the lake water from my feet all over the bed. And uh, master lights here. And then uh, you can turn the generator on and off. So there's a few different features to be able to do on that overhead controller there as well. Below the bed itself is your water tanks. So there's two 75 gallon fresh water tanks, so 150 gallons on board here. We did the egress window underneath the TV right here. And we just, this particular coach, um, they just wanted, and I, I kind of get torn about it as well, uh, just did a framed window. The nice thing about the framed window is you can open up and you get some decent cross breeze. Uh, the frameless, they look great, but very, virtually no cross breeze to be had with those. TV is fixed right there, doesn't flip up. That, like I said, that is a 43 inch uh, Samsung. Makes the closet a little bit smaller, but I don't know how many people are taking the three piece suits with them on vacation. As far as your uh, cabinets down below, the, there's some options here to do different drawer sets to be able to do uh, different cabinets. So kind of keep that in mind here. Uh, storage on each side of the bed there. Um, there is, well, I was looking for my 110 plug. I actually did the 110s and the USBs right here. So you can either plug in there, set your phone there, or plug in there, be able to drop it right there. But I think the reason why we didn't do them on the wall there this customer wanted to be either set their phone up there or underneath the pillow. <clears throat> so we come back here. Uh, full tile shower. I'm going to flip this guy over to make it a little bit more accessible. I believe this rear bath is 42 inches. Um, you can go down to like down to like a 36, but I probably wouldn't do anything shorter than this guy right here. So decent, you know, little seat right here. Um, does have the additional shower niche or the shower inset there. 
it makes it makes it handy if you have a whole bunch of uh, you know shampoo conditioner be able to have two different spots right there you can do different things like a slide bar uh, this all these shower heads you can you can reach up here and you know like restrict your flow if you're trying to conserve some water boondock a little bit no um, skylight overhead just that vent right there <coughs> Another large vanity. All these shelves are fully convertible, so you could, you know, if you have the big giant, you know, large cologne bottle, you could throw that in there, not a problem. A lot more storage here. So, you know, you, the idea here is, you know, you take your towels, kind of roll them up, and be able to stack your stack your towels there. You could add some, you know, some additional clothes there as well. And then, little guy right there, I had them. You know, make that pretty accessible there. Um, I can tell you, I think the last coach we did like this, we actually did a little, uh, just a plug because they wanted to leave their hair dryers connected inside there and not there to be able to pull them in and out. <clears throat> We've got a little visitor in here buzzing around. This guy right here, there again, this goes all the way around. So if you're looking for a good hiding spot, right back there is where you could go. Flip outs all the way across the board. They're pretty adamant about every sink location having a flip out there. Kind of cruise through here. You can see the lights cranking right here. Try to get off into disco mode right now. Let's figure out if I'm smart enough. So you can kind of change that. So that front, you change that a little bit faster. And let the games begin. Same for the back. And then the exterior as well. Get a little wild and crazy in the uh, trailer park at night if you needed to. I'm going to plop down in here in the driver's area. I appreciate you guys kind of hanging out with me with, uh, you know, kind of getting a little sore throat as I go through. A ton of overhead storage right here. Um, this guy right here, boom. So it's basically the biggest unit that they offer out in the market. Uh, so that will serve as your navigation. And uh, you can do that as your uh, camera monitor. I believe we just spec all the cameras to this guy right here. But you could, you know, you could totally, you know, you could do this as your side turn signal and leave that as a, as a dedicated reverse or keep that as reverse and then trailer cam so you could do kind of whatever configuration you might want there. Taking run this guy back just a little bit. Well there we go. So very easy to operate. Um, the steering itself is telescoping makes it really easy to be able to see all the way across the board. Uh, your transmission selector is right over here and then that is your engine brake selector as well. One, two, three. Uh, the as far as the digital dash layout, uh, you can select your uh, your following distance in regards to your uh, to your uh, adaptive cruise. You can also uh, select um, this particular unit doesn't have the blind spot monitoring, but you can turn all that off on the dash itself. Uh, I can tell you that uh, starting in about six to eight months from now, they will have a full digital dash. So pretty excited to see that, to see what that, what we can entail, how much stuff we can eliminate as far as monitors. Imagine we'll probably still do a monitor overhead there, uh, but the idea is to be able to be able to still see your GPS and be able to see a backup all in one. So I think that'll be really cool once they get that from Freightliner. We'll just, you know, time will tell to be able to see exactly what's available out there. So, for some of the people that have had the older Cascadia, boom, right there, cup holder. Uh, you could still do my patented little cup holder here on the side. Uh, we still make some of those for people that just want some, some additional uh, cup holder space and some additional charging space for their phones as well. I think that pretty much rolls up. Uh, definitely glad you guys came out. I apologize for the flip-flops, but it's great that we had a little bit of time to go out and do a little kayaking this afternoon. Always appreciate you guys coming out, checking out the videos. Uh, this is uncut. This is we we hit record and we we start rolling and we turn it off. So appreciate you guys coming out. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Make sure you guys check out our next our next video of that Western Star with the bunk beds. Uh, that coach is sold too. But at least you guys get to ooh and all about it. Anybody wants to come up, we will be here. I'm going to try to be up here as much as I possibly can. Uh, that was great to be able to take the afternoon off. 
come up, be able to check out the area, check out production, uh, be able to visit with Bob, be able to visit with Chad here at the factory, be able to really run these things down. And that's your best way to, to truly build a custom coach, in my opinion, is to be able to come out, touch, feel, see different things, and be able to, you know, we can talk about this all we want over the phone, but until you see it, it's very, very difficult. And the more you can see, the more you can touch, the more you can feel, the more you'll really understand the full customization available here at Show R. So make sure you guys keep on coming back. I appreciate your time.